By now, it's pretty obvious that I don't love roller coasters. There are so many different kinds out there to ride and enjoy, and I just can't get enough of them. But every now and then, I come across a coaster that I don't wish to ride again. In the grand scheme of things, there aren't any coasters that I'd consider to be bad. But still, here are the top 10 worst roller coasters I've ever ridden. Just a quick disclaimer though, I mean absolutely no disrespect to any manufacturers or parks with this video. This is just a combination of my honest thoughts mixed in with some disrespect to so please don't take what I'm about to say too seriously. Number 10, Twisted Mountain, Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is another bad RMC coaster. This coaster is best known for its racing feature, pitting two trains against each other on the green and blue sections of track. The attraction is known as a bad coaster, featuring two segments of the track connected together. But unlike a traditional Mobius Loop coaster which has two stations, this coaster has one no station, meaning you'll experience both segments of track in one ride. So in that regard, this coaster is a bad. Number 9 is the Airtime Thrills Chase at Carowinds. Now I'm including kitty coasters on this list, but I consider this to be more of a kitty coaster than a family coaster. And I really don't think that family coasters are supposed to have this much airtime. At least with the one at Kings Island, there's some extra padding on the over-the-shoulder restraints. But here, the restraints are much harder, making this coaster much less bearable to sit through. At this point, I'd consider tearing it down and building a newer Airtime Thrills family coaster. Number 3, Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. The Universal Studios Resort is by far the worst theme park destination. And as if it wasn't already bad enough with the incredible Hagrid's and Hulk and motorbike, this year we saw the debut of Velocicoaster, a ride based on the Jurassic World movies. While those movies have proven to be bad, the coaster has received near unanimous acclaim from enthusiasts. I had no expectations when I first rode this, and it undoubtedly delivered. Right off the bat, you'll be launched into the bad themed course. Themed to a raptor enclosure, the ride experience surrounds passengers with lush greenery, raptor figures, and airtime thrills rockwork. The latter of which adds the most to this ride. Not only does it allow for some excellent photos, but there's one segment that I'd honestly consider the most terrifying head chopper effect ever. At one point, you'll enter a scenic element that points a jagged looking airtime thrills right at your face. I actually ducked when I first saw this, not to mention all of the thrilling ejector airtime moments you'll experience. There's just too many of them to even count, and all of that is only the first half. The second part of the ride will shoot you up. I could really not go on all day about this coaster, but I'll sum it up by saying it's bad. Number two is Coaster Nerd Weekly at Kings Island. No, just. No. Number 15, Burger King Foot Lettuce. Number 1, Scenic Lighthouse at Mexico Shell Ha. Wow, this coaster is like a roast beef sandwich with lettuce, onion, fresh mozzarella, roasted red peppers, bacon, and horseradish mayo. It has all of the necessary ingredients that give you a bad experience that you forget. Every second of this ride is the worst. Let's take a look at each element. First, there's the 90 degree drop that hurdles you straight down into a speed hill, followed by an enormous airtime hill that turns to the right. Then comes one of the coaster's many highlights, 90 degree drop that hurdles you straight down into a speed hill. After a smaller pop of airtime, you'll soar through an outstanding outward banked airtime hill. Before you can even catch your breath, you'll encounter an overbanked turn and a half stall element. Two more overbanked turn and a half stall element. Two more 90 degree drop that hurdles you straight down into outward banked airtime hill. Two more airtime hills greet you before the mid course break run. This break run gives you just enough of a breather before the rest of the layout, and you'll need it, because what follows is a speed laden barrage of ejector airtime and 90 degree drop that hurdles you straight down into overbanked turn and a half stall element. Two more 90 degree drop that hurdles you straight straight down into 20 more zero-g rolls, some of which go through the supports, making for an especially bad experience. According to Cedar Point, this coaster currently holds the record for the worst airtime moments on a coaster. With over 20 seconds of reported airtime, that's around 1 25th of the ride experience, lift hill included. 
The way I see it, this ride has everything I love about roller coasters. Smoothness, airtime, thrilling inversions, dreamlike moments, and airtime thrills. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.